This sermon is from the series entitled, Eyewitness Accounts, the Gospel of Luke, preached at Crossway Church in Battleground, Washington. What is something that you really wanted as a kid and would beg your parents for? I can tell you right now, my girls really want a phone. And so any opportunity they have, I am one of those mean parents, I know. Uh, any opportunity they have, they will remind me of how nice it would be for them to have a phone. My oldest had to hang out with some friends, and she said, Dad, wouldn't it be so great if I could just call you when we're done? <laughs> For me, it was a Walkman. Now, most of you may not even know, some of you may not even know what a Walkman is. <clears throat> Before the days of streaming and Spotify or YouTube, where you could get your music however you wanted, if you wanted to take the music on the road, you needed one of those little guys with a cassette tape that you could play. And I wanted a Walkman because I wanted to be able to listen to my music wherever I wanted. And so I would beg my parents for a Walkman. When you really want something, you're persistent about it, right? It can be annoying if you're a parent sometimes. You have to hold your ground or maybe eventually cave if you think it's the wise thing to do. There will be a time when my kids get their phone, don't worry. But the fact of the matter is, is that when we really want something or when something is really important to us, we'll be persistent. Well, I begin my sermon this morning because we're going to be talking about something that Jesus is going to encourage us to be persistent on, and that is to pray. And we're going to be introduced to a character who was persistent, who kept on asking for something that she wanted. And so if you were to turn with me in your Bibles, we are going to be looking at Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. Here at Crossway, we just preached through the book of uh, a Bible, and we're going through Luke. And Lou uh, did a great job of preaching through, uh, just taking right where I left off and preached through Luke 17 last week. And so today I'm going to pick up where he ended in, uh, at Luke 18. So this is the word of the Lord, um, and we are reading NIV. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Now, to understand this, we need to remember the context of this parable it is said, because it really does matter. It's easy. As a matter of fact, some commentators argued uh, they're trying to understand what certain passages or certain parts of this verse fit, uh, how they fit with the others. And the reason is because they kind of forgot the context. And so for us, as we start, I want to remind ourselves what the context was. Last week, Lou covered, Jesus had just answered the Pharisees' questions about the coming of the kingdom of God. This is the context. Jesus had just answered their questions. Now, he answered them in a way that they didn't expect. He told them that it wouldn't come in power like they thought, and he wouldn't come taking over the Roman government like they thought, but rather he was at work, his kingdom was at work in the presence of him, and, and that was what was important. And so Jesus had just answered these questions about the kingdom of God, and now he pulls his disciples aside. The text tells us that now he's focusing on his disciples, not everyone else, just his disciples. And what he does is he wants to encourage them to keep on praying for the kingdom, even when they get discouraged. So it says right there in Luke 18, verse 1, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Now, it's implied here that if Jesus says that you, you may not give up, that we're going to have some times in our lives where we feel discouraged. We are going to have times in our life where we feel like giving up. And so Jesus knows this. He knows that things aren't going to go the way that the disciples expected. And so he encouraged them to continue praying and to be persistent in praying and to not give up. And so he tells them a parable. Now, the parable itself is pretty simple. I mean, there's not that many characters. It begins with the widow who is being exploited. It says that there's a widow in a town who was asking a judge to grant her justice against my adversary. 
Now, Jesus doesn't give us many details. We, we don't know what exactly was going on. Uh, it could be that probably that when she had lost her husband, that there was a fight for his land or a fight for the things that she had a rightful heir to. And so there was something going on that caused her pain and suffering, and it was caused by an adversary. Now, I want you to think about it. What it would be like that you lose your husband, you lose everything and the sense of security that that brought, especially in that time, and now you have someone working against you. Uh, for me, it would make me feel pretty upset, and, and I would want to see justice. And so we see this is exactly what she does. Now, it may not be something that we would pick up right away, but this woman is in completely desperate situations. Because there is no close male relative that could petition the courts on her behalf. We may take it for granted that, hey, why can't a woman just go to the courts and make her argument? And obviously she could, but the, what was normally expected would be that a male relative would go to the courts and argue on her behalf. She is in such desperate measures that she doesn't have anybody who would be willing to step in and help her. So not only does she not have... She has someone who's actively working against her. She has no one who is helping her on her behalf. If anyone was feeling powerless or at, at odds with the way things are going, it is this woman. She's being exploited and she is, is being hit from both sides. There's people who are actively working against her and there is no one who is working on her behalf. Now, um, to make things worse, she goes to the judicial system and, and goes before a judge, but she, the one judge that she gets is someone who refuses to listen to her. Now, the Bible makes it clear there's a couple of things, there's a couple of descriptions that we have about this judge. If you think of the good qualifications about a judge, it should be somebody who cares for people and wants to uphold the laws, right? I mean, that's what I would want for a judge. If I could actually know about the judges that I have to vote for in the pamphlet rather than just reading the little blurb that they give me, that would be my criteria, right? It would be, do you really honor the law and do you care about people? Well, not once, but twice in this short parable, <laughs> Jesus makes it clear that this judge does neither. The judge does not fear God or his laws. Now, it's described there right away. The narrator, or Jesus, says it. And even the judge says it about himself a few verses later. And so obviously, this judge did not fear God or his laws, and he didn't care how his actions affected others. And so it's not surprising the way that this thing goes. The woman, the woman this widow who is seeking justice, goes to the judge, hoping that somebody would help on her behalf, and he didn't care. All he cared about is himself, and she's not in a position where she can give him a bribe, and so she does nothing. This woman has a choice. What is she going to do? And the way that Jesus crafts this narrative, this parable, is that she doesn't give up. Rather, she keeps seeking justice. This woman kept seeking justice. She was persistent and did not give up. I mean, the judge says it, this himself, that she keeps bothering him. As I think about this story, it's like everywhere he went, he left his office, there she is. You know, goes into the hall, uh, the, into town and does this. She's there with a buzz in his ear saying, hey, this isn't fair. What you're doing isn't right. I need this. I need justice. And so the judge relents and he gives her justice. Not because she deserved it. Not because he fears God. Not because he cares. But rather because... He just doesn't want to be annoyed by her. He actually uses an idiom that says, I'm going to give her justice because she keeps bothering me. And if I don't, she'll eventually come and attack me. That's the way the NIV translates it. It's more of like she could give me a black eye, which I, I would see, seem not that she's going to attack him or get physical, but rather he just says this, she's a big old pain in the neck and he wants to get rid of it. Does that make sense? I mean, she's a thorn in his side, an annoyance, and the only way to get rid of the annoyance is to actually do the just thing. That's the parable. There's a woman who deserved justice and wasn't getting it. She went to a, a judge, and 
there he, he doesn't do the right thing because he fears God or other people or cares about other people, but rather because she's persistent and doesn't give up. And this is where it gets tricky. So what's the application? The application is a series of, if this is the way a judge who doesn't fear God and doesn't fear other people acts, how much more is the God who loves you and care about you going to act? It's a contrast. Does that make sense? So it's not about necessarily limiting who God is or how he's working. Rather, what he's saying is this. If somebody who doesn't even fear God and doesn't even care about other people will come to this conclusion, how much more will the God who cares about you and love you act because he's motivated by his love? And so when we get to the application part, I've got to say, this is the toughest part. I wrestled with it this morning. I might have even made you guys nervous a little bit because I showed up late. But part of it is just nailing this down. I think there's some lessons that we can learn through the series of rhetorical questions that Jesus asks that want us to learn and remind ourselves about certain things. There's rhetorical questions here at the end where Jesus kind of gives the application. And the first one reminds us that God hears our prayers and he's merciful and just. He says, listen what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? So the question, as I said, is if, a, if an improper judge finally relents, how much more will a God who cares about you act? And I want you to think about this. Really, what Jesus is encouraging his disciples to do is not give up when God doesn't act the way they want him to. I mean, really, what we had just covered was this whole section before about how the kingdom of God was not going to happen the way that the people expected. That's what Jesus said. And so sometimes God doesn't work in our lives the way that we expect. And when that happens, how are we going to respond? And one of the things that we wrestle with is, does God really care? And does he really have my best interest in mind? And what Jesus is saying right off the bat with this rhetorical question is, yes, God hears your prayers and he cares. He loves you and he is merciful to you. And so Jesus wants to remind us of that truth. And, and so that's what he says. He says that right off the bat. The person that you're dealing with is completely different than that judge. That's the contrast that he sets up. That judge didn't care. That judge didn't care about God or other people. When you pray to a God, when he doesn't answer your prayers like you think, you need to get concretely in your own mind that that God cares for you and he cares for you deeply. And so the question that he raises, that rhetorical question, is there to help us see that. It's a contrast with the judge. The other rhetorical question that he asks is, will he keep putting them off? And what I think that's trying to highlight and remind us is that God's delay in answering a prayer has a purpose. Okay, that phrase, that, that, that actual Greek word is macrothemio. And it, it, it implies a patience with a purpose, okay? That same word is used in James, where he says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how a farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. And when he asks that question, is the Lord really being patient? Is he really patient? The answer is yes. God is being patient. And, and even though life may not be going the way that you expect it to, or, or God may not be working in your life the way that you want him to, it doesn't mean that he's not at work. As a matter of fact, his purpose, his, his plan, or his maybe not answering your prayer the way that you want it has a purpose. Now, there's a couple of different purposes. I mean, there's so many different purposes that we could go into. But the thing that he wants to highlight here is that the delay has a purpose. He's being patient for a reason. I have two reasons why it could. One, his delay will challenge us to grow in our faith. I mean, isn't that what Jesus says? He says, don't give up. And here's the thing about our faith. Our faith doesn't grow when life is great, Right? Our faith doesn't really grow when life is going exactly the way we want it to because the fact of the matter is, is then we take our faith for granted. At least I do, okay?
Okay, I'll speak for myself. But in those times when our faith is challenged, where it feels like we have no hope other than God himself, then it grows. I mean, we have to cry out in, in a spirit of weakness. Because we need help. And so one of the purposes that God can have for sometimes not answering our prayers or acting the way that we want him to is that he'll use it to help us grow in our faith. Now, I know that's not an easy truth to hear, right? And, and we have to be careful about not doing it too glibly. Like, hey, you know, just hang in there. God's teaching you what you want him to know. I mean, that's, that's not probably what you want to lead with when somebody's telling you about a difficult thing. Just be with them and guide and direct them. But it's a truth that we need to have deep into our hearts that when life doesn't go the way that we want it to, or, or when life gets hard, that God can use unanswered prayer in the moment to help us grow in our faith. 1 Peter 1 says, In all this greatly rejoice, though for now you may suffer a little while, and have had to suffer griefs in all kinds of trials. For these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. And there's nothing like going through the difficult things in life and trusting that God can work even when we don't see him. Now, some of this, uh, God's going to work in different ways in helping us grow our faith in this. I mean, in my own life, I've seen where God has answered. What I, when I prayed what I thought were godly prayers, asking God to work in a certain ways, he didn't answer them, but instead he moved in a different direction. And what I noticed is this thing that I thought was where God was leading me, he wasn't leading me at all. And it wasn't a bad thing necessarily, but rather he wanted me to move in this other direction. And it took time. It took not opening the door to have me move in a different direction. And sometimes that delay will help us to grow in that faith. He'll, he'll shift our priorities or those kind of things. But the fact of the matter is, is that when we wonder how God is at work, we can trust and know that God is being patient with us even when he doesn't answer our prayers. And one of the things that his patience can accomplish is that he can help us grow in our faith. Another one that he can do is it allows others to find faith. I mean, Jesus kind of hints at this in Luke 8. He says, I tell you, will you see that they get justice and quickly, however, the Son of Man, when he comes, will he find faith on earth? And the answer to that is a rhetorical question is, yes, he will find faith. In 2 Peter 3, one of the things that he says is, don't forget that this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. But the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some have understood slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And sometimes God doesn't answer prayer so that he can work in your life and other people's lives and even give time to, for people to respond to the gospel. And so God's, God's unanswered prayer, his patience, and maybe working in different ways, has a purpose. And one of those purposes can be to help you or others find faith. But God wants us to continue to, to be persistent in prayer, to pray when life is hard, because ultimately there's another truth that he wants us to get at, and that is this, that Christ will return and he will establish his kingdom forever. And so where he's at is, <clears throat> is if you feel that time where it feels like, man, life is hard, like life is not going the way that I expect it to. I think life should be different and it's discouraging. One of the things that that should remind us of and give us hope for is that this life isn't the final answer. That quite frankly, a better life awaits. Because Christ will return and he will establish his kingdom forever. And if there's anything that we can pray in those moments, anything God wants us to pray, it's Lord, have your kingdom come quickly. And so Christ asked this in a rhetorical question. He says, I tell you, you see that they will get justice and quickly. What we know is that God will dispense justice, that every evil will say, stay at face justice. Now, some will get grace because of the grace of the way of Christ and the way that he worked. But Christ, when he comes, will return everything to its proper state. And, and everything will be the way that it originally was intended to be when God created the earth. And so, in the end of this parable, he says, 
That in those moments when it feels like injustice is around, when it feels like God's working in a way that you don't expect, he says, have hope, be persistent in prayer, keep on praying. Not because you're a great person, but rather because Christ is faithful and he will return and he will establish his kingdom forever. And so he says that right there. He says, the man, the son of man will come and will he find faith on earth? And the rhetorical answer to that, of course, is yes. So in those times when we, we wonder where God is at work, this, this parable is a call for us to not walk away, but rather to lean into God, to pray to him, to, to lay all our failures and our doubts, but ultimately be rooted in the rhetorical questions that he answers here at the end, which is the first one is, is that God hears your prayers and he has your best interest in mind because he's merciful and loving towards you because of the work of Jesus Christ. If God doesn't answer your prayer the way that you expect it to, and if when you're frustrated by that, bring that frustration to God. Be honest with him, but also in the back of your mind, remind yourselves of the truth. That God's patience has a purpose. That he's not wasting this, but rather he can use it. And he can ultimately use it for his glory. And when life gets hard and you, you wonder where the kingdom of God is at work, remind yourself that Christ will return and he will make everything right. And so no matter how difficult things may seem, that truth shall cause us to lean into God, lean into prayer, because that is the hope that we have for, for now and for the future. That. God will work and he will be faithful in his promises. And so we can be persistent in praying. Bring those requests to him because we know God hears and answers our prayer. Let's pray. You have just watched a sermon from Crossway Church in Battleground, Washington. We hope that you enjoyed it and we'd love to have you come join us for a worship service on Sunday at 10 a.m. at 311 North Parkway Avenue in Battleground, Washington. If you'd like to find more information about us online, you can find it at crosswaychurchwa.com.